Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Chris Lewicki from Planetary Resources. I'm joined today by Professor Dante Loretta. Dante, if uh, Google Hangout, well, you have to talk to it. switch over to you. Oh, how are you doing, Chris? Good to see you. <laughs> doing very well. Uh, uh, we are in uh, Redmond, Washington. Dante is joining us from the launch site of OSIRIS-REx. And today we just wanted to get together to talk about that exciting mission, but also share with you a project that Planetary Resources and Extronaut uh, have, have uh, collaborated on for uh, a fun game uh, that we'll walk through. Uh, we're going to go uh, through some of the details of OSIRIS-REx and uh, its upcoming milestones and, and uh, the very interesting, important work that OSIRIS-REx is doing uh, and uh, everything that it relates to asteroid exploration, both uh, in what that means for science, what it means for resources, and future potential. Uh, at Planetary Resources, we'll give you an update of what we're doing with ARCID-6 and uh, some of the things that we're doing uh, for our own commercial interest in asteroids. And just really share with you what's a lot of exciting progress uh, in near-Earth asteroids, in uh, fun things in STEM education, and more and more people uh, getting involved in uh, investing their careers in these important work. So, so Dante, um, again, very excited to be with you. We are 20 days away from launch. Uh, it, which have, if you've played the, the game, the drama of this in, um, uh, in the mission that we're going to go through to game with, with Extronaut is in there. Tell us, tell us uh, how things are going in, uh, and uh, intro us into the game. Thank you, Chris, and thanks for uh, setting this up for us today. We're really excited to tell everybody about Extronaut, the game of solar system exploration. Uh, I created this as a private enterprise. I, I should say, everybody, I'm a part owner in Extronaut Enterprises, and this is not affiliated officially with NASA. Uh, the lawyers want me to say that, so we got that out of the way. Uh, but it really is designed to bring the excitement of space exploration as well as capture some of the challenges that we go through when we're designing and, and getting ready to launch one of these missions into space. Uh, right now, I've got my favorite mission in the game. That's the uh, Bennu sample return, obviously, what uh, the inspiration is for OSIRIS-REx. And I'm working on getting uh, one of the large orbiters on an Atlas V vehicle out to that asteroid to bring that precious material back to the Earth. Uh, what do you got going on in, on your game board there, Chris? Uh, well, what I drew was a, a mission to the Phobos surface and uh, you know a little bit of the drama of Phobos surface, of course, orbiting Mars, but uh, we've got to land on Phobos uh, before its tidal forces tear it apart. So uh, uh, lots of planetary science going there. Uh, the, the rocket pieces that were available to me were the, the SpaceX Falcon. Um, we've got a gravity assist down on the board, and uh, we've got a medium-sized lander that uh, we're going to go to Phobos with. And uh, at the moment, I have way more Delta V than I need, uh, uh, too much rocket power. And I think this is actually one of the things that we're excited about at Planetary Resources. A lot of the asteroids that are out there actually, from a rocket standpoint, are very, very close to the Earth. Uh, and they're among some of the most accessible destinations in the orbit. And the, the fact that I'm way overpowered uh, to get there is kind of an indication of that. Absolutely. It looks like you're working on the Falcon Heavy. I see you got the extra boosters on the side there. So you might be able to save those for a more challenging mission down the road. Yeah, possibly we could uh, we could trade that away. So so tell us a little bit uh, about the game here. I, I've got my, my hand here, secret from you, just off the screen uh, with some interesting things in there, some... Uh, um, well, resources, shall we say. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, what about yourself? I think uh, your turn is up next. That's right. It's a game of hand management. So right now I've got five cards, which is where you usually end your turn at, restoring your hand to five cards. Starting out by drawing, I'm hoping I need a, an Atlas second stage and I need a right fairing. I drew a large lander, which doesn't help me very much. Uh, it says right here on what I need to do to continue my turn. After I draw a card, I can play some actions. Uh, I could really ruin your day by canceling your mission, but I'm actually hoping that I could trade with you. Uh, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to reviews, Dante. Why would you cancel us? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it's it's a little uh, competitive in the planetary exploration business. There's limited resources, and uh, unfortunately, other teams want those on occasion. That, that sounds um, like a political situation. That would never happen in real life. Absolutely. Well, the, the, I, I, sorry to say, but a lot of the action cards, I say every action card is based on something we encountered at one point or another in the development of OSIRIS-REx. So I'm bringing my personal experience really into this game as we go forward. I'm going to go ahead to the other trade with other players phase because I, I see you're working on a, a Falcon and I happen to have a first stage in my hand. I'm ah. wondering if you've got anything that you'd be interested in. Well, you already have a spacecraft. Um Let's see, I, I could give you a gravity assist or I could give you a right fairing for an Atlas rocket. 
I think that right fairing will do. Uh, you got the Falcon here, which is a really valuable card because it'll, it's reusable, just like Ooh. in real life. So it goes back into your hand after you launch your mission. Anything you can sweeten that deal with? Maybe a, a second stage booster or a, a solid like action card? Uh, well, not yet. I've got this and a gravity assist, I think. All right, I'll take it. Okay, two cards for one. Uh, I, I guess you have no mission without a first stage booster, so I'm, I'm a little bit desperate. But you have no mission without a without a right fairing, so can we get a little pass. <laughs> After that, we go for um, launch. Unfortunately, I don't have enough. I still am looking for that second stage, so I can't get off of there. And I am uh, one kilometer per second short, so the, t the play would turn over to you. All right. Well, I've got my... Uh, uh, first stage booster filled out. Still need a right fairing. Uh, let's see what I draw here. I got three cards. I'm going to pick two more. Ooh, very interesting. Ooh, very interesting. Well, let's see here. Uh, I guess for the viewers at home, I can uh, kind of talk about the, the interesting dynamic here. I, I pulled two very exciting cards. You you showed me your hand a little bit before, but I, I've got a government shutdown, uh, which of course uh, would, um, would slow you down, but uh, I don't think you're quite close enough. I think what I uh, what I'd actually like to do is uh, a financial audit and uh, oh, just go through and look at uh, see how you're managing your project. There you go. That would allow you to draw two cards. You would have pulled the uh, the large lander, which may actually get you more points for your mission. So you oh, might yeah. want to go after that. I do have plenty of delta V, and I can get it there. That's right. So you can increase your launch mass. So, and then you did grab that canceled card that I alluded to before. So you could really, with oh, that government right. shutdown and the canceled in your hand, puts you in a very powerful position. You only get okay. to keep one of those, and one has to go into the discard pile. All right. Well, uh, you know, I guess I still can't get there because uh, I'm missing a right fairing, but I'll, I'll take the more points. Uh, All right. So, so the large right, so land this, becomes you know, yours. I lose that cancel card. All right. Well, this is how the game goes. And just like a real mission, you don't get any points <laughs> until you, you launch and you have a successful mission. It doesn't matter how hard it was to get to this point or – you know, how hard it was to get to 20 days to launch on OSIRIS-REx. Uh, it's a major, major milestone, but uh, the points are when you collect the data from the mission and, and achieve that objective. Right, and the number of points you get increases with the size of your spacecraft because you get more science instruments and there are more science out of those larger vehicles. So Planetary Resource was as excited to collaborate with, uh, with ExtraDot on this. We, we were a big backer uh, of the game uh, when you had it uh, uh, in... Um, uh, the crowdfunding campaign, and uh, happy to be listed in the credits of the game. Uh, but it's past crowdfunding now, and you can actually just buy this game, right? That's right. Uh, it came into uh, from our distributor in July. It's available on Amazon.com. It's doing well, getting great reviews. Thank you, everybody out there who took the time to post the review. All five stars on Amazon so far. We're very excited. And what makes me the happiest is that we're getting a lot of feedback from parents that tell us how much their kids are enjoying the game. They love building the rockets. They're also making their own little game just out of the mission cards because, as Chris mentioned, each one has a mission briefing, which describes what the mission is about, and it's a fun to just guess what mission that is right here. So they're finding all kinds of ways to learn about space science, which was really the objective when we put it together. And I added a bonus uh, workbook to the program. So there's 10 pages of information about asteroid Bennu, uh, rocketry, spacecraft, and solar system exploration. So it's a great education package. It's also just a really fun game, and I know a lot of the team on OSIRIS-REx is playing it, and I think also back to Planetary Resources. Yeah, certainly. And uh, you know, maybe one of the things, as, uh, as both of us who are, who are building missions and launching missions and, and doing this stuff in real life, what maybe is most enjoyable about the game is the cards go back in the box at the end of the game, and you get to choose a new hand. That's right, absolutely. So we're, we're excited about the OSIRIS-REx mission. You know, the RI in OSIRIS stands for Resource Identification. Tell us a little bit more about your upcoming milestone and how OSIRIS-REx is going to contribute to our knowledge about resources on asteroids. Yeah, we are here at Cape Canaveral right now in the final stages of preparation for launch on September 8th. It's an incredibly exciting time. I can't even convey how happy I am to be here and see this. The spacecraft is built. It's fueled. Uh, on Saturday, tomorrow, we've got Media Day, where we're going to have a bunch of social media and reporters coming in for the last look of the spacecraft, because next week we're closing it up in the fairing or the nose cone of the rocket, 
And then the week after that, we're going to lift it up to the top of the Atlas V and get ready for the countdown to launch. So we are just about ready to depart on our journey to Bennu and back. And I think, you know, it would be real fun while you watch the launch countdown. And, you know, launches do get scrubbed because they want to make them successful. So you might have to wait till the next night. And uh, while, you're, while you're sitting around waiting for that to happen, watching it on the video feed, you could be playing Extronaut. That's what I'll be doing. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're excited for that. Uh, Dante, you're an advisor to Planetary Resources. You've helped us actually uh, identify some of the core things that we can be doing to commercially identify resources on asteroids. Uh, over my shoulder here, we've got the ARCID-6 satellite, uh, which is right next to us in the clean room. We're about ready to deliver that into a launch flow for our own launch this fall. Uh, on a Falcon rocket, uh, and on that mission, we have a mid-wave infrared sensor, which is a little bit like uh, some of the instruments on OTES that are in OSIRIS-REx, and uh, it's kind of both the scientific exploration and the commercial exploration of space, and uh, we're happy to be making progress on both fronts. Yeah, it's a really exciting time. When I first came up with an acronym for OSIRIS-REx and I put the resource identification, I thought I was thinking sci-fi future. And I can't tell you how excited I was when I saw the announcement for the formation of planetary resources. And everything we're doing feeds forward into future exploration of asteroids. And we're very happy to be part of your team. Yeah, it's uh, for me to, to see these missions go from concept into reality, to hit their milestones, and to have, you know, have done them myself on, uh, on missions to Mars uh, and other missions in the solar system. This is a huge milestone, uh, planetary resources. We want to congratulate the entire OSIRIS-REx team uh, on their success in getting this far on the mission. We certainly wish you successful launch uh, and a successful mission checkout. Uh, I'm personally excited for uh, four years from now when we arrive at Bennu and have found the site. We're going to touch down with TAGSAM and acquire that uh, up to two kilos of material that we're going to bring back from the first primitive asteroid, uh, that is going to be the type of drama that, that only a geek can truly appreciate. It's gonna be a great moment in space exploration history. All right, well, uh, we'll keep this brief today for everyone watching, thanks for joining us. Uh, follow uh, more about OSIRIS-REx uh, at uh, asteroidmission.org, is, do I have the URL right? Absolutely, asteroidmission.org. Uh, you can learn more about the mission and about the educational and STEM component with Extronaut. Uh, there, I think you'll find links to uh, go play the game that we showed today on Amazon. Uh, you, of course, can follow us at planetaryresources.com, and we'll continue to share uh, updates of just all the really interesting pieces that make these missions come together, the people who are behind them, the, uh, the point of why we're doing this and why it's so important, and very excited to, as always, bring everyone with us along on the journey. So, Dante. Best of luck and congratulations on getting to this point. Thank you, Chris. Thanks again for your support. All right. We will see you on launch day. Bye. Bye.